In this tutorial, you'll learn how to work with objects using shaping tools to do things like weld, trim, and combine objects in CorelDRAW. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can download a written copy of this tutorial, along with a sample design file, so you can try out the steps yourself. The easiest way to access CorelDRAW's shaping tools is by holding Shift and selecting multiple objects at once. This will cause the Shaping Properties bar to appear at the top of your screen, which has buttons for each of the eight shaping tools. Those tools are Weld, Trim, Intersect, Front minus Back, Back minus Front, Simplify, Boundary, and Combine. You can also access the shaping tools through the Shaping Inspector. To open it, just go to Window, Inspectors, Shape, then make sure to toggle the inspector button on at the top right of your screen, choose which shaping tool you want to use, and then simply select it from the drop-down menu. For some tools, it gives you the options to leave your original source object and or to leave your original target object in case you need the original objects to continue building your design. So before we start, it's important that we understand what a source object is and what a target object is. So when we're working with these shaping tools, we'll be combining two or more objects in a way that either transforms an object or creates a new object altogether. Our source object refers to the first object selected, or if we're combining more than two objects, our source objects are all the objects selected before the target object. Target object refers to our last object selected. That's important to know as we go through because we'll be using the terms source and target objects a lot. So let's take a look at the weld tool first. The Weld tool takes multiple shapes and combines them into a single object with the properties of the target object. So we're going to use the objects on the left to create the object on the right. So holding Shift, we'll select each of these orange triangles, which will be our source objects. And then still holding Shift, we'll select the circle, our target object. Then we'll go up to the Properties bar and hit the Weld button. And as you can see, those objects have combined to create one new object that's taken on the properties of our target object. In this case, that means the whole thing becomes purple. Now we could do the same thing using the Shaping Inspector. We'd just select Weld from the drop-down menu, and then to weld them together, we'd select our source object, click Weld 2 in the inspector, and then click on our target object. And as I mentioned, we do have the option to leave our original source object and to leave our original target object if we like. And that's the only specific example I'll give of using the Shaping Inspector, because using all the other shaping tools with the inspector works exactly the same. Let's move on to the Trim tool. The Trim tool allows you to use one object to cut a piece out of another object. So it'll take your source object and use that shape to cut out the overlapping area of your target object. So for example, if I want to recreate this crescent moon on the right, I'll take this orange ellipse, which will be my source object, and drag it into position so that I can see that crescent shape that I want. Then holding Shift, I'll make sure the source object is selected, then select my target object, then we'll go up to the Properties bar and click the Trim button. Now, just moving the source object out of the way will reveal our trimmed target object. Next is the Intersect tool. The Intersect tool allows you to create new shapes using existing overlapping shapes. As with the Weld tool, new objects you create will take on the properties of your target object. So if we want to continue this star pattern right off the edge of our blue rectangle here, we'll drag these two stars over so that they overlap the rectangle, then holding Shift, we'll select our rectangle to specify it as our source object, then select one of our stars as a target object, then we'll go up to the Properties bar and click the Intersect button. Now when we move that star out of the way, we reveal a new object in the shape of only the overlapping section of the two objects we started with. And I'll quickly change that object to white to match our pattern, and repeat the process with the other star. Now let's take a look at the Simplify tool. The Simplify tool trims overlapping objects using each other, so that all that remains are the shapes that we actually see on the top layer. A great way to see its effects is to switch to wireframe view. Then just lasso a group of overlapping objects to select all of them, and click the Simplify button in the Properties bar. As you can see, all of our overlapping lines in the wireframe have been removed. If we switch back to Enhanced view, you'll see that it looks like nothing happened. But if you start clicking and dragging those objects away, you'll see that they've all been trimmed and that they leave a blank space beneath them. Next is the Front Minus Back tool. Front Minus Back deletes the background object, trimming all overlapping sections from the front object. 
When you're using front minus back, there's no source object or target object. All that matters is which object is ordered in front and which is in back. So we'll hold shift and select our two overlapping objects, then go to the properties bar and click front minus back. And there you can see we're left with our front object minus the overlapping sections of the back object. Next is back minus front. The back minus front tool works exactly opposite of the front minus back tool. It deletes the foreground object, trimming overlapping sections from the background object. So again, we'll hold shift and select the two overlapping objects, click the back minus front button in the properties bar, and we're left with our back object minus the overlapping sections from the front object. Next is the boundary tool. The boundary tool creates a new object using the outline of overlapping objects. So here we have a bunch of individual triangles that we want to use to create the one solid object that we see here on the right. So first we'll select all of these objects at once, then we'll go up to the properties bar and click the boundary button. Then we'll just click and drag this away to see that we've created a new object in the shape of the collective outline of the objects we selected. And then we can just remove the outline and fill it in yellow to match our object on the right. The last tool we'll take a look at is the combine tool. The combine tool does two things simultaneously. You can think of it sort of as the weld tool plus the trim tool. It takes multiple objects and combines them into one object with the property of the target object, just like the weld tool. At the same time, it trims those objects overlapping sections. So holding shift, we'll first select a source object that's completely encompassed by the target object behind it. So here we have this little white object that's representing the gap between the deer's legs. But right now the deer object itself doesn't have a hole right there. So still holding shift, we'll select the deer silhouette as our target object. Then we'll go up to the properties bar and click the combine button, and our source object will disappear, leaving a hole in its shape in the original target object. And to finish the job, we can repeat this step, selecting multiple source objects at once to speed up the process. And that's how you work with objects using shaping tools in Corel Draw. If you're watching this video on YouTube, You'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can download a written copy of this tutorial, along with a sample design file, so you can try out the steps yourself.